Here we go. Here was the one that was missing yesterday. So that's pretty darn great. At least it was able to uh, get to me rather quickly. Like Ted assumed, it was probably just um, they couldn't find it on the truck or yeah, or somebody forgot to put it on the truck or whatnot. But uh, yeah, here we are instead. We got them. This is, uh, well, it's just a little tiny bit greasy. And a little hefty, too. Not gonna lie to you on that one. Yeah. Hey, super nice stonewash finish. Like that. This one is branded Tucson, even though it's a Mazwan Mokhtar design. Interesting. Some of them do that, some of them don't. Now I had uh, thought, and I still kind of think so, that uh, this knife reminds me quite a bit of the uh, the TS-140, the uh, the bowhead, which was, uh, I think it was a night morning design, but it was a titanium integral. This one's not quite, but uh, very similar, I guess, with the, uh, I really like how Mazwan's been doing this lately with a lot of his designs. Uh, I appreciate it from, you know, a blade protection sort of thing. Also, because uh, a lot of designs from Tucson uh, really have uh, high grinds that uh, end up having the blade exposed. This is certainly one way to uh, force you into not doing that, <laughs> I guess. This does have that uh, kind of ball uh, pocket clip, which I don't necessarily know how much I actually like those necessarily but they are kind of on a case-by-case -case basis flinging it out with the thumb that's all right it's like we have a uh, finger choil there but it is um very very small like uh, i guess maybe an index finger or something like that would probably be best for that uh Another very gradual plunge grind, and it does end, like, way out here. So, uh, you're probably going to end up hitting that, if not in the first sharpening, and one kind of subsequently later. That's a little unfortunate. We do have internal lock bar relief. That always makes me happy. And, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, we do have some pockets going on. Uh, on the inside here, yeah, you can see that. So they have milled out some uh, some weight relieving things, but uh, this guy is not a lightweight knife, regardless. But it is amazingly full sized, <laughs> super comfortable in the saber grip, nice in the uh, the hammer grip there. Reverse, oh yeah. And no jumping on the back, but we do have a nice, uh, nice gentle roundness over there. So I can uh, grab that this way. Uh, this one is really right in that ballpark of uh, a Warren Cliff slash sheep's foot. I think I would probably classify this just a touch more as a uh, sheep's foot myself. It is quite nice and thin behind the edge. That is super nice to see. Yep, I could probably get that action just a little bit better by doing some tweaking on it. Uh, yep, reverse flicking works super great. Uh, a lot of people uh, do a reverse flick by sticking their fingernail through that. I generally don't do that. Like I said, my nails are generally garbage anyway so i might just jack myself up whether or not i actually have this crap on my nails or not but uh yeah so i usually just use the meat and uh you know it works quite well it's a little bit more difficult to do under the camera i think than uh, i would just due to the angles and all that sort of stuff uh, rather pleased with this one I do think I like it quite a bit more than that uh, TS-300. 
but I can go ahead and uh, do a little cut test on this thing. Obviously, it's fresh out the packaging. This one I also got from Amazon from that Tengli seller, and it also came from Cindy. So, yeah, I am at least a little inclined to think that they are um, officially involved somehow with it. Alright, what do we have? 185. Stupid nice. Yeah. Man, that is a aggressive stone wash. Love it. This one's obviously in 14C28N as well. Definitely something that a stone wash will uh, help with in general. All right, but since uh, another day had passed, I got something else in the mail that I thought was going to be super, super useful. And hey, they're kind of small, but uh, yeah, these are itty bitty little uh, microfiber cutting swabs kind of things. Uh, these are from KPL. As you can see, I guess, by the sticker on the front there. <laughs> uh, not very expensive either, so it was definitely worth it. This is a pack of 50. And uh, the reason why I can kind of show you, and it uh, was inspired by me uh, actually doing a little bit of work on a, uh, a friend's Swiss Army knife. But, yeah, you can see uh, much smaller than a standard Q-tip. So, uh, especially for slip joints and things like that, or um, things that don't have a, uh, a wide uh, blade stock thickness or something like that, these things are uh, going to be much more useful. They have a little bit of a microfiber sort of stuff on the tip there, and I do believe I am going to enjoy those quite a bit for uh, doing some cleanings and other stuff so that's fantastic alrighty so yeah we got that we got the 158 micarta and the uh, the 300 that I picked up both of those yesterday obviously as you'd see uh, I have not tried sharpening these guys yet I got uh, I'm a little deep in a video game at the moment, and uh, decided that I was going to do that rather than um, do sharpening and watch YouTube for a little bit. But I am going to have fun trying to get all of these guys stupid nice and sharp. Yeah, I like this thing. 270. Good knife. So far. I mean, obviously I haven't really done a review, haven't looked so much on the inside. Pivot on this thing is actually a little bit different. Um, it's not even really a, a collar necessarily like uh, this guy is. Or at least if it's a collar, then uh, it's actually sitting flush rather than sitting proud like uh, this 300 is. Interesting. All right. Well, yep, that's, that's my new knives. Yeah, this one definitely got a lot nicer in the action once I uh, opened it up and uh, tuned it a bit. The uh, the 300 is basically right around the same after uh, doing all that stuff. It's not too bad, but not exactly the, uh, the best one I've ever seen. But cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that with this one and uh, think about doing some sharpening. So, all right. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Please. Well, I just pulled the uh, 270 apart in here to kind of look on the inside of them. And, uh, yeah, this thing is quite heavily um, skeletonized on the inside, which is great. Uh, these pieces are still kind of heavy, and that probably has to do with the fact that... Uh, yeah, these guys are all part of the same titanium slab. There's no, um, 
there's no separation where they were tack welded together or anything like that. And that does add a lot of weight to it, unfortunately. But I still do like these kind of things. They just have a really nice rigid feel to them. Uh, and obviously it protects the blade all the way through. Might be just a little bit more difficult for you to try to, uh, you know, blow any lint out if you uh, get some caught up in the back there or whatnot. But uh, that's something that I am certainly willing to uh, tolerate. Not to mention, I'm also used to it from a lot of them, like the uh, the Benchmade here, and uh, well, the Manix too. I suppose is a little bit different, except for uh, the lock thing there. But uh, you know, also Spyderco lockbacks and all that sort of stuff. So it doesn't bother me whatsoever, and uh, I do actually appreciate that thing. Got a little over travel stop built into the uh, steel thing there. Uh, we do have a blade pin uh, set in the front of the uh, the handle here. So this uh, curve on the blade is uh, quite a bit different than you might see otherwise. And uh, yeah, these things were steel collars obviously um but they sit flush which i'm happy about uh kind of wish that that happened over here but it did not oh well yeah this is just a uh, stupid stupid quick video i just kind of wanted to show off the inside of this thing it's uh it's quite neat inside very nicely designed and uh really comfortable all right that's all i wanted to say have yourself a wonderful rest of your day yo